Hey guys, John here. This is another episode of Vault of the Dungeon Master, and today we're going to look over a bit of, uh, how mechanics evolved, kind of. I guess it's like a history lesson. It's really going to kind of derive into, I'm going to show you entries in different books and kind of read things to you, but in a way. But uh, I just want to look at some stuff, and I just think it's fascinating how role-playing games, you know, D&D, &D, particularly how it's evolved and today we're going to talk about the concept of be a two-fisted fighter <laughs> or in other words two-weapon combat or two-weapon fighting and we'll just I'll start with this for more people who are familiar with modern games uh, you understand like third edition pathfinder fifth edition two weapon fighting it's it's a you know there's a penalty there's a feat that lowers the penalty and there's other feats that make you better at things and classes are better two weapon fighting etc well back in i guess the old days of the 1980s in first in AD and D first edition uh, they had some some really light Two weapon rules, kind of, you could only use, I think it's daggers and clubs, it's actually, it's, it's here in the TMG actually, because it's, uh, it's page 70. Sorry, I'm a little unprepared. Here we are, attacking with, oops, sorry. Uh, attacking with two weapons, their characters normally use single weapons, but may choose, you know, to, use, to not use a shield. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of neat. Um, this article, Be a Two-Fisted Fighter, from Dragon Magazine, uh, I will, can't recall the issue it was in. Uh, put uh, the issue. I'll, I'll put that in the description. And uh, it kind of elaborates on that. It basically says uh, show up your. It says any character may use two weapons. And with the and you must decide the handedness of the character. So left handed, right handed. That for the for your primary hand, and then your off -hand, your secondary hand or off hand. And uh, it goes off, the penalties go off what your character's dexterity score would be. So, if I had a really, if I rolled really, really bad and had dexterity of 3, my primary hand's minus 5, my secondary hand's minus 7, as opposed to like an 18 to 20, which is no primary, minus 1 on secondary. Well, that's kind of neat, that's... Sorry. That's kind of neat. That's kind of an interesting way of putting it. I think that's kind of cool. They also make uh, other references in this article about having a high, high dexterity uh, weapons being able to use in your primary hand, battle axe, hand axe, club, dagger, horseman's flail, foot hammer, footman's mace, horseman's mace, footman's pick, you know. That type of stuff. Uh, and then, they, you know, they say in the second hand, it's an axe, a dagger, a hammer, a footman's mace, footman's pick, short sword. Kind of expands on that. It also brings up in the article uh, stuff about deities and demigods, for examples. Like, it uses specifically Fafford and Greymauser. You know, from... Their respected book series. Now they're two-handed weapon users, and you can even see in the pictures they, you know, they have two different weapons. So yeah, that's kind of an early stage of it, an early evolution of it. And then I went a little further than needed to. Uh, I looked, I opened up the old second edition, and I looked again what it was. And then here's the one attacking with weapons. However. They limit it to warriors and rogues, so fighters and thieves and assassins and that stuff. Which is interesting in itself. This is, I would say this is a little bit more of just an expanded what's in the original DMG. I wouldn't say it's 
fully here with What's in Dragon Magazine, from what I read. Um, only because it doesn't really make it sad. It also doesn't bring up, in the second edition, what this does here with, if you have multiple attacks per round, what you can do with two weapons. Because two weapons, you initially start with two attacks. And how does that change, you know, because normally you would have one attack. And that's kind of interesting. I just wanted to make this neat little video to kind of show how things evolve through the ages of things. And, yeah, honestly, when I run OSR stuff like First Edition or Osric, and, I, and people say I won't be a two-open fighter, I honestly, I go to the Dragon Magazine article. That's why I have it in my binder there. Because, to me, it, it makes sense. And it makes sense that really any character can use it. Because, I take it from a, I fight and dagger here. You know, foam fighting, LARPing, that kind of thing. And you can pick up, you can have two swords. and No matter what your persona is. And I think that's kind of neat. Uh, and you can be really good with it. You know. And it is also... In, in terms of AD&D, that's actually a very, a very loose thing AD&D did. Because normally AD&D was like, no, very regimented. Certain things only get certain things. But uh, here they said no. Totally. A cleric could totally wield two mace, two footmen's maces. Which I think, just, I, th I think that's awesome. That kind of rewards a cleric for having a high dexterity. And even a high strength to a point. So yeah. Uh, that was just kind of a kind of neat video I came up with uh, for me in the future. I'm going to probably next video talk about campaigns and gaming stories a little bit more back to regular format. But have a good day. This has been another episode of Ultra Dungeon Master. I'm John. Happy gaming.